Defense may call its next witness. Defense calls Christian Bahena Rivera. Swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God. I do. Okay. And Mr. B, would you please head to that chair, please? may proceed. Please state your full name. Christian Baena Rivera. Christian Baena Rivera. Now, sir, you have two last names. Is that right? Yes. The first last name is Baena. Is that right? Yes. The second last name is Rivera. Yes. Now, that's something we don't see a lot uh, with, with white people. Is that something that a Hispanic person often has? Uh, it is the way that is used in Mexico. Explain for the jury what your two last names come from. Uh, the first one uh, from my father and the second one from my mother. If I were to call you uh, Mr., what would be the customary uh, last name that I would, I would use? Baena. Baena. All right, Mr. Bahena, where were you born? In Guerrero, Mexico. In Guerrero, Mexico. Where is Guerrero, Mexico? ¿Dónde queda Guerrero, Mexico? En la parte sur del país. In the south part of the country. Who is in your family? In su familia, ¿quiénes son? Mi papá, mi mamá y dos hermanas menores. Uh, my mom, my father, and two younger sisters. So you're the oldest of the family, is that right? Familia, ¿es correcto? Correcto. Correct. Approximately how many years apart are you and your middle sister? Four years. What about your younger sister? Ella tiene 13. She's 13. 13 years now? Yes. Do your mother and father work for a living? Mi mamá es ama de casa y mi papá trabaja. My mother is a housewife and my father works. Where does your father work? He works as a laborer on the fields. Is that some a uh, job that he has had for some time? The entire life. So as long as you remember he's worked out in the fields, is that right? Yes. What sort of jobs are available uh, in your hometown? Uh, well, to cleaning the fields, uh, any type of job that is, requires hand labor. You're not paid in uh, American dollars down in Mexico, is that right? No. No. You're paid in, in pesos, is that right? Yes. With pesos, how much did your father make working? 1,500 pesos each week. And 1,500 pesos, I understand that the dollar fluctuates, but approximately how many pesos are there in a dollar? 
alrededor de 20. Around 20. So that's about $75 per pay period. Is that right? Correct. Correct. Did you attend any schooling when you were in Mexico? Sí. Yes. Where did you attend school? In mi pueblo. In my hometown. Describe what the school looked like. Describe cómo se veía la escuela. Muy pequeñas, no, no tan equipadas, solo lo necesario. Uh, we're very little, not so high tech, just only what was necessary. How many rooms were in your school? Three. Describe your home. Describe su hogar. Está construida de tierra y cemento y techo de teja. Uh, well, it is built uh, out of uh, dirt and cement, and the roof is tile. Do you have any sort of a, a kitchen? Solo lo necesario para cocinar. Only what is needed for cooking. And, and what is that, sir? ¿Y qué es eso, señor? Un refrigerador, estufa. Y... Well, a refrigerator, stove. What about living spaces? Uh, is there any sort of a, a living room or television set? No solamente es un rectángulo y todos los cuartos se dividían con cortinas. No, it is only just a rectangle and then the rooms are divided by curtains. Now, bueno. Sir, you went through, uh, you graduated from your school, is that right? Yes. How far do you go to graduate from school in Mexico? Uh, well, you go around uh, nine, ten years. I interpret will correct. You go around nine to ten. When you graduate, is that something that is celebrated in Mexico? Yes. Do you have a lot of pictures of when you were uh, in Mexico? Not a lot. Uh, the last picture that you have with your family, uh, is that from when you graduated? Yes. Going to bring up on your screen that is Defendant's Exhibit FFF. Can you see anything? Sí. Yes. Uh, describe what is in that picture. Estoy con dos de mis primos en la terminación de mi escuela. I am with two of my cousins at the ending of my schooling. Now I'd ask counsel to bring up defendants exhibit G, 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 or excuse me, excuse me, L, L, L. What is shown in that picture? Uh, well, me, my parents, and my sister. Your Honor, at this time, I would offer Defendants Exhibit F, 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 and L, L, L. Mr. Brown? It's, uh, our only objection is to relevance. Objections uh, overruled. At this time, Defendants Exhibits F, 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 and L, L, L are admitted. I'd move to publish, Your Honor. Granted. Now, sir, uh, defendants exhibit FFF. Uh, what is this show? Yo y mis primos. Me and my cousins. You're dressed nicely, is that right? You can say that. Uh, which one are you? The one in the middle. 
And what does this portray, sir? Y esto que muestra. Ah, una fotografía con mis primos cuando terminé el año escolar. Uh, just a picture with my cousins uh, when I finished my school year. Now, I'm going to ask counsel to pull up a defendant's exhibit LLL. What does this show? El mismo día, pero con mis padres y mi hermana. Well, the same day, but with my parents and my sister. Now, sir, at some point in time, you decided to come to the United States. Is that right? Yes. Yes. When was it that you decided to come to the United States? Cuando recién acababa de cumplir 17 años. When I had just turned 17 years old. Now, you were aware that your father had brothers that lived in the United States. Is that right? Sí. Yes. And was it your understanding that they all lived close in proximity to each other? Yes. At some point in time, did you make the decision to come to the United States? Yes. How does one get here? Crossing the border. Do you have to hire someone to help you? Yes. What is that called? Un coyote. A coyote. Let's talk about how you got to the United States. Uh, you first went to meet with the coyote, is that right? Yes. And where was that? En la frontera con Texas. At the border with Texas. When you got there, were you able to, to find this person? Yes. And then where did you go? Uh, a cruzar el río. Then to cross the river. How did you cross the river? A bordo de una lancha inflable. On an inflatable ra raft. How many people were with you? ¿Cuántas personas estaban con usted? Nueve o diez. Nine or ten. Once you crossed the river, what did you do next? Pues, hubo muchos pasos, pero recuerdo que caminamos alrededor de los puntos de chequeo de la frontera. Ah, uh, well, there were many steps, but what I remember is we walk around the points of uh, the checkpoints at the border. So you walk around where border control is, is that right? Sí. Yes. And the next thing that you did is what? Llegar a Houston. Arrived to Houston. When you arrived to Houston, did you go anywhere? Un hotel. At a hotel. At the hotel, did you stay with anyone else? Con las personas que crucé. With the people that I crossed with. So all nine or ten people were in this hotel room? Sí. Yes. Where did you sleep? Donde dormí. En el piso. On the floor. Next, what did you do, sir? Viajamos a el estado de Iowa. We arrived at, at the state of Iowa. Did you get there by vehicle? Usted iba por vehículo. Sí. Yes. Once you got there, um, were did you meet your uncles? Usted bueno, se reunió con tus tíos. Sí. Yes. Where was that at in Iowa? In Tema. In Tema. Had you ever met any of these people that are, are your dad's brothers? Los recuerdo, los recuerdo cuando era muy pequeño, pero desde que se vinieron para acá no los había visto. Well, I remember, uh, well, I remember uh, since I was very young, but since they came over here, I didn't. So what you mean is that you think they've came to Mexico, some of them, before, is that right? Sí. Yes, uh, but it, you don't remember who and when? No. No, I don't. Once you meet with your, your dad's brothers, 
Are you offered a place to stay? Sí. Yes. Where did you stay at? Con Luis Medina. With Luis Medina. Who is Luis Medina? Es el esposo de uno de mis tías. He is the husband of one of my aunts. Once you settle into Iowa, how long did it take for you to find work? Dos días. Two days. How were you able to find work so quickly? Uno de mis tíos lo encontró para mí. One of my uncles, find it for me. Where did you start working at? En una lechería en, en un pueblo llamado Blainstown. At a dairy, at a town called uh, Blairstown. What did you do at the dairy? Ordeñar vacas. I will milk cows. When you worked there, uh, did they require any sort of formal documents uh, to, to verify you were a United States citizen? No. No. How were you paid? In checks. With checks. And so they were written out to your Entonces, name, Christian Bahena Rivera? Sí. Yes. What did you do at the dairy? To milk cows. How long did you work there? Alrededor de dos años y medio. Around two and a half years. Once, uh, at some point in time, did you decide to change employment? Sí. Yes. And specifically, you uh, went to Yarabi Farms, is that right? Sí. Yes. How did you find the job at Yarabi Farms? I found out that they were hiring people. Did you talk with them? Sí. Yes. Uh, was it a better paying job? Sí. Yes. What were you paid at Yarabi Farms? $12.60. with 60 cents. And that's per hour? Yes, that's per hour. Sí. Yes. So you worked a lot, is that right, sir? Sí. There's yes. Been, there's been some testimony that you worked 12 hours a day when you worked. Is that correct? Algunos días más. Some days more. Uh, and there's been testimony that you worked 12 out of 14 days. Is, is that right? Sí. Yes. So at the very least, you would work 12 of the 14 days, 12 hours a day. Is that right? Yes. On average, how much money would you bring home every two weeks? Between $1,500 and $1,600. Now, sir, did Yarabi Farms require you to have notification or official documents? Yes. And did they require that right offhand? Yes, but if you don't have them, they'll give you time to get some. So you started right away, is that right? Yes. When you started right away, how were you paid? In efectivo. Cash. So they paid you cash until you were able to provide official documents, is that right? Yes. When you first introduced them, yourself to them, what did you say your name was? Christian Bahena Rivera. Christian Bahena Rivera. Now after you submitted documents, uh, you had a new name, is that right? Yes. What was that? John Bud. John Bud. Now, when you worked for Yarabi Farms, did they regularly refer to you as Christian? Algunas veces. Sometimes. Now, sir, it's customary for the oldest male to take care of his family. Is that right? Normalmente. Normally. 
Did you provide any assistance to your family in Mexico? Yes. How much money would you send your family uh, and how often? Alrededor de 700, 800 Around seven or eight hundred dollars per month. How do you get that money to Mexico? A través de las tiendas mexicanas. Through the Mexican stores. And would it be fair to say that there's a lot of uh, Hispanics in this country that provide assistance to their families down in Mexico? La mayoría. Most of them. So it, it's not uncommon for our Hispanic population to go to the Mexican store and send money home. Is that right? Correct. Correct. So similar to you having two last names, uh, more often than that, that's what uh, our Hispanic population does. Is that right? Yes. Now, at some point in time, you met a, a woman that testified yesterday. Yes. How old were you when you met Iris Gamboa? 19. She was still in high school, is that right? Yes. Where were you at that you met her? At a 15-year-old uh, birthday party. In a birthday party, it's called a, or it's called a quinceañera, is that right? Yes. What does that mean? ¿Qué significa eso? Es en la creencia mexicana que cuando una, una niña pasa de ser niña a ser mujer. In the Mexican belief is, is when a girl goes from being a girl to a woman. So a quinceañera is something that is often uh, celebrated uh, amongst females uh, approaching adulthood. Is that right? Yes. When you uh, went to this party, describe, were, was it mostly Hispanics or were there white people at this party? 99% Mexican. And, and sir, you don't have any, I, I guess, it's not that you dislike white people, would that be fair to say? Correct. Correct. Uh, but you also in this country have r routinely spent time with uh, other Hispanics, is that correct? Yes. Now Brooklyn, it, it has a fair amount of uh, white population, you'd agree with me on that? Mostly. And so would you come across white people in your day-to-day -day experiences? Yes. But routinely when you're, you're spending time with, uh, when you're socializing, is it with other Hispanics? Yes. What uh, language is used? Spanish. So with Iris, uh, you guys hit it off pretty quickly? Yes. Did you become boyfriend and girlfriend fairly quickly? Eight days after meeting. How long were you in a relationship with Iris Gamboa? Four years. At some point in time, did she become pregnant with a child? One year after starting our relationship. Did you two eventually move in together? Yes. And was that at the residence at Yarraby Farms that has been talked about? Yes. At a certain point, it was decided for you and Iris to separate, is that right? Yes. She moved to a different residence, is that right? Yes. Did you help her move? Yes. And since then, have you uh, agreed on a, a custodial and support relationship with Iris? Yes. What she described yesterday, is that what you guys have been doing? 
Yes. Now, sir, other than for this offense, have you ever been in jail or in custody? No. No. Ever had any law enforcement contact other than what's been described with uh, Deputy Kivy and then with law enforcement uh, when you were arrested? No. No. You're here illegally, is that right? Yes. Are you careful to avoid contact with law enforcement? Very careful. Do you try not to drive around often? Only when it's necessary. Do you take back roads when you're able to? Yes. Sir, when you talk to law enforcement uh, when they brought you in from the dairy farm, uh, Approximately what time did you go to the sheriff's office? Between 2 and 3 in the afternoon. What time did you go to work that day? I was going to clarify. 4.30 in the morning. Do you remember when law enforcement showed up at Yarabi Farms? Yes. And what do you remember? Uh, estaba trabajando y uh, mi patrón lle llegó a donde yo estaba y me dijo que, que nos necesitaban en la oficina y que probablemente había problemas para mí. I was working and my boss came to the area where I was and he told me that, that we were needed in the office and there was probably going to be troubles for me. What did you think those troubles were? En ese momento no lo sabía. At that time I didn't know. Uh, do you know what a raid is? Usted sabe que es una regada. Uh, cuando va la migra. When uh, immigration comes. And it's, have you heard of uh, immigration coming and kind of rounding up illegal Hispanics? Yes. Were you afraid that that was what was going to happen here? Por un momento, sí. For a moment, yes. Now, at some point in time, you agreed to go to the sheriff's office. Is that right? Yes. And you were interrogated for 11 plus hours. Is that right? Correct. Correct. Did you tell law enforcement the truth that night? Not all. Molly Tibbetts was in the trunk of your car. Isn't that right? Yes. And you did not tell them uh, what really happened. Isn't that right? Correct. Let's talk about what happened that night. On July 18th, 2018, uh, you got home from work. Is that right? Correct. Correct. When you got home, uh, is there anything that you plan to prepare for the next day? Yes. What is that? Tenía pensado limpiar mi carro porque el siguiente día iba a salir a comer con una muchacha. I had planned to clean out my car because the next day I was planning on going out with a girl. So you had a date lined up? Yes. Did so you get home, do you shower? No, fui al me dirigí a la casa de mi tío a pedirle la una aspiradora para limpiar mi carro. No, I went to my uncle's house to ask him for a vacuum cleaner to clean my car. Where does your uncle live? Brooklyn. Brooklyn. When you did you go end up going to your uncle's and speaking with him? No, él no estaba en su casa. No, he wasn't at home. Did you go ahead and take the vacuum? Correct. Correct. That's something that wouldn't bother him from prior dealings, is that right? No, and in fact, I called him to tell him that I had taken it. 
So you get the vacuum, and then where do you go? To my house. When you get to your house, what do you do? I realized that the sun was still very strong. It was too strong to clean my car, so I decided to go in and take a shower. Approximately what time did you take a shower at your home? About 6, 6.30. After you took a shower, uh, what did you do? I left the bathroom. What did you see? Two people in my living room. Those two people in your living room, how were they dressed? With sweaters and their faces covered. Describe the color of the clothing that they were wearing. It was dark clothing. Can you describe what uh, the build of either of these people? Uh, one of them was bigger and a little bit fatter, and one of them was about my stature and a little bit stronger, burly. Did those men have any sort of weapons? Yes. What uh, describe which man had which weapon? El más grande mire que tenía un arma y el el otro tenía una navaja. The bigger one I could see that he had a gun and the smaller one I could see that he had a knife. Describe the gun. Describe la el arma. Pues no sé mucho de armas, solamente puedo decir que era negra. I don't know a lot about guns. Uh, I can just say that it was black. What about the knife? Era una navaja mediana, color camuflajeado. It was a medium-sized knife, a uh, camouflaged color. What did these men say or do? Que no hiciera nada tonto y todo iba a estar bien. That I shouldn't do anything stupid and everything was going to be okay. What happened next? Estuvimos ahí por un buen rato. We were there for a long while. And did anything happen while you were there? Solamente estaban ahí murmurando y ahí estuvimos durante un largo rato. Well, they were just there uh, whispering and we were there for a long while. At that point in time, were they ever violent towards you or aggressive towards you? No. No. Did you comply with all of their instructions? Yes. Did you argue with them? No. No. Did anything else happen at the residence? No, hasta que salimos de la casa. Not until we left the house. Once you left the house, what happened? Subimos a nuestro al carro. We got into our to the car. And when you get into the car, which man uh, gets in which seat? The bigger one in the back seat, and the other one gets in the seat beside me. So the, the smaller one is the one with the knife, is that right? Yes. And then did you drive? Yes. When you drove, did they tell you where to go? They just told me to drive straight. Did they make any comments uh, while you were driving? Yes, one of them told the other one. One of them said to the other one something about someone running. Now, sir, you don't speak much English, is that right? Correct. Correct. How were you able to tell what they were saying? Well, I don't know how to speak a lot of English, but I understand the basics. 
And so you were able to understand that's what was said, is that right? Correct. Once you get to Brooklyn, what happens? Solo entramos al pueblo por la parte, se podría decir la parte trasera del pueblo. Uh, we just went into town. We went into town by what you could say would be the back way into town. Is there a specific road that you came in on? Yes. Do you know what that road is? No sé el número de la carretera. I don't know the name of the road. Sir, I'm going to show you State's Exhibit. Five, uh, and that's already in the record, so if we could publish it. Now, sir, you've seen this exhibit before, is that right? Yes. And there's a road that is described as 385th Avenue on the screen, is that right? Yes. Is that the road that you followed on your way into Brooklyn? Correct. Correct. When you followed that road, did you see anyone? Yes. Who did you see? A una persona corriendo. A person jogging. And, and sir, did you know that person at that time? No. No. Ever met Molly Tibbetts before? No. No. But now, do you recognize or believe that person was Molly Tibbetts? That's right. When she was running, was she running out of town? Yes. And you're driving into town, is that correct? Yes. What happens next? Solo seguimos manejando. We just continue driving. Y después me piden que dé la vuelta. And then they asked me to turn around. When you turned around, were you in town? Sí. Yes. What happened next? Volvimos a salir por el lugar donde entramos. We uh, went back out through the same way we came in. Tell me what happened next, sir. Manejamos todo, todo de hecho, toda la misma ruta. We drove straight, we drove straight on the same route. Y me volvieron a pedir que regresara. And was going to clarify. Y me volvieron a pedir que regresara. And then they asked me to turn, turn back. When you were in town, uh, describe these men and anything that they were doing in the vehicle. Solo cuando íbamos a entrar al pueblo, ellos trataban de magacharse un poco lo más que podían a los asientos. Uh, just that when we were uh, coming into town, they tried to kneel down, crouch down as much as they could in the seats. You don't remember the exact route that you drove in Brooklyn, is that right? Correct. Correct. But you've seen uh, the surveillance camera from Logan Collins' uh, surveillance footage, is that right? Correct. Correct. Do you think that likely was your vehicle? Oh, yes. Uh, it, it would looks like your vehicle, would you agree with that? Yes. And you remember driving around in that area? Pues no recuerdo que era es que precisamente si esa esa área, pero si es mi carro. I don't remember if it was exactly that area, but that's my car. Now, how many times did you drive by Miss Tibbets? Y ahora cuántas veces pasó usted manejando por la señora Tibbets? Alrededor de tres o cuatro. Around three or four. And that was that direction of these men, is that right? Correcto. Correct. Let's talk about the last time that you drove by Ms. Tibbetts. Uh, la última vez que la, nos encontramos con ella, ella venía de regreso hacia el pueblo. The last time that we met her, she was on her way back into town. And 
Specifically, sir, uh, she was running on 385th Street, is that right? That's correct. May I approach? Sir, I'm going to hand you this laser pointer. Now, sir, if you could point to the area that you met Ms. Tibbetts the last time. No se muestra en ese, en ese mapa. Uh, you cannot see it on the map. <coughs> all right, we're out of batteries here. If you, is it all right if he gets up? Yes. Sir, go ahead and get up and point to the general area where you were. Anna, did you translate it? I interpret, did I hear any words? Okay. And Christian, I'm not trying to trick you. I know you said that it's not on the map where you met her the last time. Is that right? Correct. Correct. Could you point to the direction of, of the area outside of the map where you saw her? Now, sir, I'm going to bring up another exhibit. Now, sir, is the place where this woman was running uh, shown on this map? Yes. Can you point yes. to the area on the exhibit where this woman was? Around. Uh, and you can go ahead and sit down, sir. Now you pointed to an area that was just before the intersection of 385th Avenue and 200th Street, is that right? Yes. So when you're driving on that road, are you driving towards town or away from town? Saliendo. Leaving town. When you see Ms. Tibbetts, is she driving or is she running towards town or away from town? Towards the town. So you meet her head on with your vehicle, is that right? Correct. Correct. Does she make any statements or, or anything like that? No. No. She, she doesn't wave or anything like that? No. What happens next? Nos seguimos de largo y a donde se forma la la cruz me piden que dé la vuelta otra vez. Well, we continue forward and where you come to the intersection, the cross, then they ask me to turn back. So the intersection of 385th and 200th Street, is that right? Sí. Yes. Did you do that? Yes. Once you did that, did you drive back towards town on 385th Avenue? Yes. What happened next? Manejamos un poco y unos metros adelante me piden que vuelva que me pare. We drove for a little bit and then some meters forward, they asked me to stop. Were you able to see the woman at that time? No. No. Describe the terrain. Era, era una carretera derecha, pero había como ciertas colinas. Well, it was like a straight road, but there were like some hills to it. Ms. Grease, uh, let me stop you there. We do need to take a uh, recess at this time.
<coughs> Members of the jury, I want to remind you of your admonition. We'll take a 10-minute recess. Please leave your notebooks where they are, and uh, you may leave at this time. And uh, Mr. Bahima, you may step down at this time. In the presence of the jury, Mr. Behema, the defendant is present along with all the attorneys of record. Sir, I want to remind you you're still under oath. And with that, uh, Ms. Fries, you may uh, continue. So, sir, you're driving back on that road uh, back into town, is that right? Yes. And at some point before you get back into town, were you directed to stop? Correct. Correct. Who told you to stop? The person that was next to me. So the, the man in the front seat, is that right? Correct. Correct. Also the man with the knife. Sí. Yes. What happened next? Uno de ellos se bajó del carro. One of them got out of the car. Which one? El de la parte de enfrente. Uh, the one that was on the front. So the guy with the knife. Correct. Correct. What did he do? El solo empezó a ir en la hacia el, hacia enfrente, hacia la dirección del pueblo. Well, he just started uh, going towards uh, forward, towards the town direction. How long was he gone? Alrededor de 10, 12 minutos. Around uh, 10 uh, to 12 minutes. The guy in the back, was he doing anything? No, solamente estaba callado en la parte de atrás. No, he was only quiet in the back part. Did he seem nervous? Cuando empezó a pasar el tiempo, Él empezó a ponerse nervioso, a murmurar en la parte de atrás. Uh, well, when the time started going by, he started uh, kind of whispering in the back. Did you hear him say anything? Pues se escuchaban muchas cosas, pero lo único que pude entender, lo único que se pudo escuchar fue que él dijo, come on, ya. Yeah. Uh, well, um, you could hear a lot of things, uh, but uh, I guess what I heard him saying is, uh, come on, Jack. Now, sir, you've heard Mr. Fries and I at least insinuate that Dalton Jack could have been involved in this. You've, you've heard the, the trial, correct? Yes. Are you telling this jury that Dalton Jack was one of those people? No. No. Do you know who either of the people were that were in that car with you? No. No? What happened next? Alrededor de los 12 minutos, el, la persona regresa de vuelta al carro. Uh, well, around like 12 minutes after, that person comes back to the car. And when they come back to the car, do they get in? Él se sube. He gets in. What happens next? Me piden que siga manejando. They ask me to continue driving. Did you continue to drive into town? Sí. Yes. Did you reach town? No. No. Were you directed to stop at some point? Sí. Yes. Can you describe for the jury approximately how far you traveled? No más de 300 metros. Not more than 300 meters. What were you directed to do once you drove 300 meters? Que me detuviera y les prestara mis llaves. Uh, to stop and to hand them my keys. What happened next? Primero el, 
la persona que estaba en la parte de adelante se bajó del carro y después el que estaba en la parte de atrás. Well, first the person that was in front got out of the car and then the person who was behind. What happened next? Escuché que abrieron la cajuela. I've heard them opening the trunk. What happened next? Solamente sentí un movimiento en el carro y se volvió a cerrar la cajuela. I just heard a movement in the car and then that the trunk closed. Did the men get back in the vehicle? Sí. Yes. What happened next? Me pidieron que me diera la vuelta. They asked me to turn around. Did you do that? Sí. Yes. What did they say next? Que continuaba manejando y me indica que vaya hacia la terracería. Uh, they asked me to continue driving and to go towards the gravel road. Did you do that? Sí. Yes. What happened next? Solo recuerdo estar manejando muy rápido. I just remember to be driving uh, fast. At some point in time, did you stop? No. No. Did, so you continued to drive, is that right? Sí, por varias millas. Yeah, for several miles. Right. And what happened next? Llegamos a una parte donde a una carretera de pavimentada. We got to an area, uh, we got to a road that was paved. Me pidieron que la cruzara. And they asked me to cross that. And then you continued on gravel road? Sí. Yes. Do you remember which direction you were going? Mm, no sé la dirección, solamente sé que era todo derecho. I don't remember the address. All I know that it was straight. So you continue driving, is that right? Correct. Correct. How long did you continue driving? Tal vez cinco, ocho minutos. Uh, perhaps five to eight minutes. At some point in time, did they direct you to pull in somewhere? Llegamos a, al, al frente de una casa blanca. Uh, we uh, arrived uh, like in front of a white house. Sir, I'm going to bring up States Exhibit 25. Sir, you've seen States Exhibit 25, is that right? Sí. Yes. And, and you generally agree that this was the area that Molly Tibbetts' body was found, is that right? Sí. Yes. When you mention a white house, is that what you're talking about in States Exhibit 25? Correct. Correct. Now, sir, I'd ask you to get up uh, and to point to the jury where it is that you were directed to turn, if you see it. Tell me what happened next. Ahí me pidieron que me regresara. They asked me there to uh, go back. So you turned in at the house and then you drove back, is that right? Yes. Now, sir, I'm now showing you States Exhibit 28, or excuse me, 26. Uh, this is the, the same area from a different direction. Is that right? Yes. When you came back, was there a point in time that you were told to turn? Yes. Where were you told to turn uh, if that's shown on States Exhibit 26? 
at the entrance of the cornfield. If you could get up again and show the jury on State's Exhibit 26, I'd appreciate it. Now, sir, State's Exhibit 27, uh, this shows the entrance of the, the cornfield that you just pointed to, is that right? Yes. Uh, have you ever been to that location before? No. No. Did you understand really where you were? No. No. Once you pull in, what happens next? Solo me piden que apague el carro. They only ask me to turn the car off. So y empiezan a bajarse el carro. And they start getting off the car. So they get out, is that right? Sí. Yes. Did they take your keys? Sí, tomaron mis llaves y mi teléfono. Ah, uh, yes, they took my keys and my phone. What happened next? Antes de irse, uno de ellos me dice que no fuera a decir nada de lo que había pasado. Uh, before uh, they leave, one of them tells me not to say anything about what had happened que ellos conocían a Iris y conocían a mi hija. That they knew Iris and that they knew my daughter. Que si decía algo, ellos se iban a encargar de ellos. That if I said something, they would take care of them. After that, what happened? Ellos me dijeron que solo esperaron unos minutos y me fuera. They told me just to wait a few minutes and to leave. What happened next? Me bajé de mi carro porque no tenía mis llaves. I got out of the car because I didn't have my keys. So, obviamente sabía que había algo en la capela. Well, obviously, I knew there was something in the trunk. And why did you think there was something, or why did you know there was something in the trunk? Porque anteriormente ya había sentido cuando, veo en la, cuando pusieron algo en la capela. Because previously, I had felt when they had placed something or put something in the trunk. Did you look in the trunk? Sí. Yes. What did you see? Un cuerpo. A body. Was that the body of Molly Tibbetts? Sí. Yes. At that point in time, did it look like she was alive? Al principio miré como algún movimiento, pero después no miré ninguna, ningún tipo de movimiento. Well, at the beginning I saw like a little bit of movement, but then after there was no movement. Did she have injuries to her body? No mire. I did not look. What did you do next? Estuve un par de minutos pensando que 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 qué qué hacer, pero fue cuando decidí solo bajarla del carro. Well, I stayed there a couple of minutes thinking uh, what to do. And then I just, uh, I decided to uh, take the body out. Why didn't you call the police, sir? Because I was scared. Why were you scared? Porque si hubiera llamado la policía, esto no se, es algo que no se miraría nada bien. Uh, well, if I would have called the police, it's something that it wouldn't have been seen good. It wouldn't have been right. Did you have any reason to believe that Molly Tibbetts' life could be saved? No. No. When you picked her up from the trunk, describe her body. Solo muy pesado. It was very heavy. What about uh, any signs of life that you saw to Molly Tibbetts? None. How was she dressed? Con ropa deportiva. Uh, with a sports clothing. What did you do next, sir? Solo como pude lavaje el carro y decidí ponerla en el maíz. I just, uh, I, the way I could, I 
picked her up and then I put her in the cornfield. Did you cover her with corn? Yes. Why did you do that? Porque no quise dejarla al como que tuviera expuesta muy expuesta al sol. Because I didn't want to leave her uh, well, I didn't want her to be too exposed to the sun. When you left her, was she clothed? La dejé exactamente como estaba en la como estaba en la cajuela. I left her uh, exactly how she was in the trunk. And at that time, do you recall her having any shorts on? Sí. Yes. What about her sports bra? Did it cover her chest? Everything, she had everything on. There was only one shoe that was off. What did you do after you laid her in the corn? I tried, I tried to go home. Were you able to figure out how to get home? No. No. How were you able to find your way home? I looked at my phone. And did you specifically use your phone to find directions? Yes. Now, Molly Tibbetts' phone <coughs> Fitbit and her earbuds were left in your car. Is that right? Sí, estaba en la cajuela junto con mis llaves y mi teléfono. Ah, uh, yeah, they were in the trunk, at this, along with my phone and my keys. What did you do with Molly Tibbetts' phone, Fitbit, and her headphones or her earbuds? Las dejé a la orilla de la carretera. I left it on the side of the road. Now, sir, you didn't tell a soul about this for over a month. Is that right? Correcto. Correct. And if you weren't approached, you would have taken this night with you to the grave. Isn't that right? No más probable. Most probably. Why didn't you call the police or let investigators know what happened? Because I knew if I did it in because I knew if I did it in any way, I was going to be involved. And specifically, uh, were you afraid for your ex-girlfriend and your daughter? Sustain and ask that the question be rephrased, please. Were there any other reasons that you did not call law enforcement? Yes. What were they? Porque estaba, recordaba que ellos me decían si decía algo, iban a hacerle algo a mi familia, a, mis hija, a mi hija y a mi, a mi ex novia. Because I remember uh, that they said that if I would say something, they were going to do something to uh, my family, my ex girlfriend, uh, my daughter. They used her name, is that right? Correcto. Correct. Do you know Ulysses Felix? Sí. Yes. How do you know Ulysses Felix? Es, es primo de mi, de mi ex -novia. It is my ex-girlfriend's cousin. So it would be Iris's cousin, is that right? Sí. Yes. Has he been to your home before? Sí. Yes. Has he spent the night before? Sí. Yes. Now, you're not alleging that Ulysses was in that car, is that right? Correct. Correct. But Ulysses uh, did spend time with your, uh, I guess, Hispanic group of people, is that right? Yes. He would attend various functions, is that right? Yes. Did you know his parents? Sí. Yes. How did you know them? 
We worked at the same place. Now, Ulysses also attended uh, Brooklyn uh, School, is that right? Yes. And unlike you, did he seem to have a fair amount of white friends? Yes. All right, sir, let's go through this interview. Uh, you were interrogated for over 11 hours, is that right? Yes. Describe how the interview progressed through those 11 hours. Pues al principio me empezaron a hacer preguntas normales, como de dónde era, cómo me llamaba, todo lo básico. Ah, well, at the beginning they were asking me common questions like uh, where I was from, uh, I need to clarify. De dónde era y qué más en el Mi rutina. My routine and, and all that. Do you recall them telling you that they weren't with immigration? Yes. And when they told you that, did you believe them? For a period of time. Did they continue to be more confrontational with you? Sustained. Tell me how the interview progressed. Pues ellos me empezaron a, a, a acusar con cosas. Well, they started accusing me with things. What sorts of things did they accuse you with? Con un par de fotos. With a couple of pictures. Ellos dijeron que habían encontrado cabello de la muchacha en mi cajuela. They said that they have found a woman's hair in my trunk. Y que habían ubicado su teléfono junto al mío. And that they have found her phone, or pointed my phone, uh, with my, her phone with mine. So they suggested that they had phone activity that tied your phone and Molly's phone together? Sustained. Please rephrase. Sir, please make the jury understand what you meant about the evidence that they confronted you with your phone. Que ellos tenían información que mi teléfono y el móvil está viajando juntos. That they had information that my telephone and Molly's telephone were traveling together. Did they make any other suggestions that they had specialized technology with reference to your phone? No. 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 Did they ever suggest to you that what you were saying was not true? Yes. How often did they suggest that? Every, every so often. Were you, did you ever believe that things would be better if you told them what they wanted to hear? Yes. Was that often? Yes. Did they ever use the phrase, help yourself? Yes. And what did you take that to mean when they used that phrase? Pues que si yo los ayudaba, les decía lo que ellos querían escuchar, me podían ayudar. Well, that if I helped them, if I told them what they wanted to hear, that they could help me. Did they confront you or did they tell you that often? Yes. At some point, you said that you blacked out. Is that right? Yes. Was that your idea? No, they said it first. And specifically, was there a suggestion made that you might be crazy? Overruled. Algo así, dijeron que personas a veces pueden ten, estar enfermos y olvidar cosas. Something like that. Something like that sometimes people can be sick and they can forget things. 
Now, sir, did you intend to tell these men the truth about what really happened that night? No. No. Why not? Because in my mind, I had my daughter. So no matter what happened, you did not plan to tell them what really happened. Right. As these, this interrogation went on, tell me uh, about your alertness. Well, I was already tired and I was very sleepy. Now you saw some videotape of you falling asleep during this interrogation, is that right? Yes. Were those the only times that you fell asleep during the interrogation? I'm not sure, but there were many times. At some point in time, the investigators asked you to try to take them to Molly Tibbetts, is that right? Yes. And you agreed, is that right? Yes. Why did you agree to do that at that point in time? Well, principally, well, for one, uh, because I was already very tired and I wanted it to stop. And most importantly, because they told me uh, to uh, put myself in the family's position and uh, to think of her that if she was my daughter, what would I have done? So you drive out, well, you don't drive, but you ride out to to the body, is that right? Yes. Were you able to provide assistance in finding Molly Tibbetts? Yes. Did they seem to have some idea already where she was? I can't be sure about that. Describe the car ride out there. Well, I asked them to go to the highway that's on the way to my trailer. To have a point of, well, to get oriented. Did they do that? Yes. And tell me about the trip then to the body. So I told them to drive straight and not to stop. What happened next? No paramos hasta llegar a la hasta la casa blanca que se mira en la fotografía. We didn't stop until we got to that white house that you can see in the photo. When you got to the white house, what did you do? Pues ahí realicé que ya que ese era más o menos nuestro lugar, pero que ya nos habíamos pasado un poco. Well, that's when I realized that that was more or less the place, but that we had gone past it a little bit. So did you direct them to turn around? Correct. Correct. Were you able to assist them in finding the body? Yes. Sir, how tall are you? Cinco siete. Five seven. How much do you weigh today or now? La última vez que me pesaron en la cárcel fue 148 libras. The last time that I was weighed in the jail was 148 pounds. How much did you weigh when you were arrested for the death of Molly Tibbetts? 125 libras. 125 pounds. No further questions. Mr. Brown, you may cross-examine. Thank you. <clears throat> Mr. Bahena, you led officers to Molly Tibbetts' body, is that correct? Yes. 
uh, you remember your interview with uh, Officer Pamela Romero? Yes. You recall it even here today, is that true? Most of the things. Okay. You're not too, you were not too tired to remember what you and she talked about at the Sheriff's Office, is that right? Uh, what? Could you repeat the question? You were not too tired to remember what she, you and Pamela Romero talked about at the Sheriff's Office. Uh, if I'm not too tired now or at that time? At that time. Well, there were some times that I was tired, but obviously if someone's talking to, to you, you're going to be alert. Right. And you have uh, no issue, you were able to un understand her questions, correct? Yes. There was no language barrier between the two of you? No, not, none that I knew of. Uh, would you agree that you left the Sheriff's Office with Officer Romero and other officers at around 4.30 a.m. on July 28th, 2018? I'm sorry, July, I'm sorry, July 18th of 2018. Let me let me rephrase the question, if I may. I, I misspoke the date. Did you leave with officers at 4.30 a.m. on August 21st of 2018? Yes. In the sheriff's office? Yes. And it was your request to go to your residence uh, in or near Brooklyn, correct? Yes. And whenever you got to your residence near Brooklyn, you were able to take them to the location where Molly Tibbetts was found. Is that correct? Yes. Did you remain in the car while officers searched for Molly Tibbetts at the location you took them to? Yes. At one point, the officers came to the car to get you out, correct? Correct. And you went back into the cornfield with the officers, is that right? To the edge of the corn. But there is a area where you could walk where corn wasn't growing. Correct. Correct. And you took them to the edge of the corn. Yes. Uh, that was some distance off the road, is that correct? Yes. And you couldn't see that location from the edge of the road where you walked to, correct? That's correct. And whenever you were standing at the edge of the corn, you pointed in the direction where Molly Tibbetts was located. Is that correct? Les dije aproximadamente en qué dirección podría estar. I told them more or less in what direction uh, she would be. After you pointed in that direction, officers found Molly Tibbetts, correct? Unos minutos después. Some minutes afterwards. Were you still present at the edge of the corn when they found her? No. No. Were you taken back to the car? Say. Yes. You agree, Mr. Bahena, that you led officers to Molly Tibbetts on August 21st of 2018? Correct. Correct. You own a black Chevy Malibu, is that right? It has a chrome yes. mirror. I'm sorry. My bad. It has a chromed mirror. 
Yes. Is that a feature that you placed on the car yourself? No. No. Was that feature on the vehicle when you purchased it? Yes. Uh, your car also had chromed handles? Yes. It also had spoked wheels? Yes. You've been seated here in the courtroom for the entirety of the trial, is that right? Yes. You saw the videos that were played last week that show a car, correct? Yes. You agree that that's your vehicle? 100%. You also agree that Molly Tibbetts was jogging in the area uh, when your car is seen, is that right? No podría decir si si estaba en esa área, pero lo único puedo decir que ese era mi carro. I can't say if uh, she was in the area. The only thing I can say is that was my car. You told Officer Romero that you confronted Molly Tibbetts on 385th. Is that correct? Sí. Yes. You never mentioned two other men. Is that true? Correcto. Correct. You told Officer Romero that you were angry at Molly Tibbetts. Is that true? I think so. You agree that you saw Molly Tibbetts on 385th, correct? Sí. Yes. On July 18th of 2018, correct? Sí. Yes. You also indicated to Officer Romero that Molly Tibbetts became angry with you. Is that correct? Correct. That Molly Tibbetts threatened to call the police. Is that correct? Correct. Correct. You never mentioned two other men to Officer Romero, is that correct? Yes. All right. You claim that you went to a cornfield where Molly Tibbetts' body was placed with two other men. Yes. These men had their faces covered? Yes. They were wearing sweaters, you said? It, it was similar to a sweater. So long sleeves? Yes. Uh, and long pants? Yes. And uh, what was covering their face exactly? A type of hat. Like a stocking cap? Something like that. So whenever you get to the cornfield, you're in your vehicle. Yes. There's no other vehicle there. Not that I saw. Whenever you left the cornfield, you left alone. Yes. The other two men that were there, did they just walk back? They ran towards the road. So they ran towards the road and just disappeared? I, I didn't see them again. I don't know where they went. So you drove these two men out to the cornfield, correct? How's that? I don't understand. You drove the two men in your Malibu to the cornfield where you dumped Molly Tibbetts, correct? Yes. And you're telling us that you drove back to your home alone? Yes. And you happened to find your cell phone and the keys in the trunk of the car? Yes. And these two men just disappeared? That's right.
Whenever you put Molly Tibbetts into the corn, you concealed her body, is that correct? You could say that. You placed corn stalks over her body, is that right? Yes. And that covered her body so other people could not find her, correct? She was not completely covered. You knew Molly Tibbetts' location for nearly five weeks, correct? Yes. Before you told anyone in law enforcement, is that right? Yes. The two men that you say um, you were with, you don't know who they are. That's correct. But you just happen to remember that one of them used the name Jack. Yes. Mr. Bahena, you don't have a problem with blacking out, apparently. Is that true? Correct. You remember the details as you've uh, described them here? Yes. Yet you told the officers, uh, specifically Officer Romero, that you blacked out some details with regard to what happened to Molly Tibbetts, correct? Correct. Correct. The two men that you say that uh, came to your residence, did they just walk in? No sabría decirle porque al momento cuando yo estaba bañándome. I wouldn't know what to tell you because at that moment I was taking a shower. So your claim is is that you were taking a shower. When you get done with the shower, these two men are standing in your residence. Yes. And they are covered head to toe so you cannot identify them. That's correct. Do you have any idea how they got into your trailer? Through the door. The door was not locked? No. No. You live in rural Powashik County at the time, is that correct? Yes. Near Yerebi Farms? Yes. Did you see any vehicle uh, as to how these two men would have been transported to your residence? Not that I saw. So no car, to your knowledge? I did not see any car outside of my trailer. Why would the two men in your trailer need your help? Objection. Sustained. Did you have any connection to the two men that walked into your trailer that you know of? No. No.
Whenever you're at the Powashee County Sheriff's Office being interviewed by Pamela Romero, you're around police officers, correct? Yes. You're in a safe environment, would that be true? You could say that. Okay, the two men that you claim um, abducted Molly Tibbetts were nowhere near the sheriff's office, to your knowledge? Not that I know of. Okay, you not only talked to Pamela Romero, you talked to other officers while you were at the sheriff's office, is that right? Correct. You were in a safe place, correct? You could say that. And you failed to mention anything concerning these two men and their involvement with Molly Tibbetts. Uh, well, like you said, I was in a safe place, but I didn't know where my daughter was. Well, why not just, you could just tell the officers what happened, correct? You could have done that. I could have done that. Okay, and you chose not to, correct? Correct. You could have told the officers that you were worried for your daughter, correct? Yes, I did tell them that at the beginning. Right. But worried for your daughter that somebody else might harm them if you told them what you told us here today. I told them that before giving them any information, I needed to know that my daughter and her mother were safe. And you were assured that they were safe? They didn't tell me anything. Okay. Did you press them on that at all? No. No. You could have had the assistance of law enforcement uh, in protecting your, the mother of your daughter and your daughter, correct? Maybe. But you chose not to press that, correct? Correct. Um, Mr. Bahena, did you ever have any connection to uh, Dalton Jack? None. You didn't know him or his brother Blake, is that correct? Correct. And you did not know Molly Tibbetts? No. No. Do you remember being um, interviewed by Officer or Deputy Steve Kibbe? Yes. Uh, that occurred in Malcolm on August 16th of 2018? Yes. He talked to you about uh, the disappearance of Molly Tibbetts, is that right? He just asked me or something like that. So Molly Tibbetts, that subject matter came up, correct? Yes. And at, at that time, you knew where Molly Tibbetts was located, correct? Yes. You knew what had happened to her, correct? Correct. You knew that she had been abducted, is that right? Yes. You knew that she had been stabbed to death, is that right? Uh, at that time, I didn't know how she had died. I just knew that she was dead. Whenever you put her in the corn, she was bleeding, correct? Uh, not, there, was no more, there, was no, there was no longer any blood on her. Well, you knew she was dead when you put her in the corn, isn't that right? Yes. You did not tell Steve Kivy any of those facts, correct? Correct. 
You did not ask him for any protection for your daughter or your uh, daughter's mother. Is that right? Correct. You denied having any knowledge of where Molly Tibbetts was located or what happened to her. Is that right? Yes. Judge, may we approach, please? Okay, Mr. Uh, Vahena. Whenever you um, confronted Molly Tibbetts on 385, you recall that, is that right? No, yo nunca lo hice. no, I never did that. Okay. You were on the road on 385th uh, whenever she was running, correct? Sí, pero nunca la confronté. Uh, yes, but I never confronted her. Okay, you told the officers that you confronted her, correct? Sí. Yes. You told the officers that she was angry with you, correct? Algo así. Something like that. And you told the officers, told Officer Romero, that she slapped you, correct? I don't remember that. Okay, that may that you're angry at her, correct? Well, you could say that. Well, you said it, isn't that right? I don't remember, and that's what I cannot answer. Okay. You told Officer Romero that you were angry, isn't that right? He's not answered it. Overruled. The witness can answer. Pues si está en el video, si lo dije. Well, if it's in the video, I said it. You told the officer, Officer Romero, that you were angry, correct? Objection. Asked and answered. Sustained. After that, you told Officer Romero that you were driving in your black Chevy Malibu alone. Yes. And you remember having earbuds on your lap, isn't that right? Correct. Correct. And you remember Molly Tibbetts being in the trunk, correct? Correct. Correct. Failed to mention anyone else in the car, correct? Correct. Correct. The next thing that you remember, you were at a cornfield on the edge of the cornfield. Do you remember that? Yes. And you alone, Mr. Bahena, took Molly Tibbetts into the corn. Yes. And you alone placed corn stalks on her body. Yes. Mr. Bahena, you stabbed Molly Tibbetts, isn't that right? 
objection, Your Honor. I think Mr. Brown is not clear as to whether he asked about the interview and then he asked about what Mr. Bahena Rivera did. I, if, if it needs to be clear. I'll sustain the objection and ask you to rephrase and be more specific, if you would, Mr. Brown. I can do that. <laughs> Mr. Bahena. We're not talking about the interview. I'm talking about what you did. Okay? Are we clear? Okay. Yes. You stabbed Molly Tibbetts. Isn't that right? No. No. You're the one that did that. Isn't that true? Objection asked and answered. Sustained. You alone took Molly Tibbetts into the corn. Isn't that right? Yes. The two men that you mentioned didn't help you do that. Is that right? Correct. You took Molly Tibbetts into the corn and placed corn stalks on her body. Correct? Asked and answered sorry, and compound. An interpreter did not hear the question. Mr. Brown, for the benefit of the interpreter, I'm going to ask uh, you rephrase the question, and before the witness answers, I'll give the uh, defense an opportunity to uh, lodge their objection. I can do that. You took Molly Tibbetts into the corn alone, correct? Objection asked and answered. Sustained. You placed corn stalks on her body, isn't that right? Correct. Correct. And you left her there for nearly five weeks, correct? Asked and answered. Overruled. Correct. Correct. You never mentioned, Mr. Bahena, that the two men that you claim were with you, that you ever saw them again. Did you? No. No. Did they ever contact you again? No. No. These men who you claim killed Molly Tibbetts never contacted you one more time? No. No. And to your knowledge, these two men that you claim uh, did the things that you've described, you have no idea how they had any connection to you? No. No. To your knowledge, Mr. Bahena, have, has anyone threatened anyone since uh, you took? Objection. Vague. Can I finish the question? Please? Yes, you may. Mr. Bahena, has anyone threatened you since you took Molly Tibbetts' body into the corn? No. No. You've had no other contact with these two men that you claim did what you described. Correct. Correct. Do you remember being asked in the interview by uh, Ms. Romero 
if you were covering for anyone? Yes. And you told her that you were not, is that correct? Correct. So you were given an opportunity in the presence of law enforcement to tell what you've told us here today, correct? Correct. And you chose not to do that. At that moment, I was really scared. I understand that you may have been scared, but you chose not to tell them, correct? Correct. Do you remember your um, interview with Miss Romero out of the cornfield? No mucho. Not a lot. Okay. At one point, you told her that you, whenever she was pro, well, let me strike that. At one point during the uh, interview with her, she presses you for more details. Do you recall that? Objection. At this point, counsel is testifying. Sustained. Do you remember being at the cornfield at the side with officer at the side of the cornfield with Officer Romero? Yes. And she was talking to you, correct? Yes. And she was asking you questions, correct? Correct. And she you were providing her answers, is that right? Yes. At one point towards the end of that interview, did she ask you for more details? Yes. And your response was, I brought you here. Correct? I don't remember, but if it is in the interview, it is true. You also told her, I did it, didn't I? Do you recall that? The truth, no. You don't remember asking her that question? No. No. You told her that you could not provide any more details, is that right? If it's in the interview, it is true. I want you to go off what you remember, Mr. Bahena. Okay, can you do that for me? Bueno, pues, Detective Romero dice que la entrevista en el carro duró aproximadamente una hora. Yo solamente recuerdo que ella me preguntó, solo dime, uh, well, uh, Officer Romero says that the interview in the car lasted like for an hour, but all I remember that she asked me was, an interpreter clarified, interpreting that here. What was the reason why you did it? And you told her that you couldn't remember, correct? I'm sorry. Approach, please. Uh, members of the jury will uh, be in recess at this time for lunch. Let's be back here ready to go at 1.15. Before I send you on your way, I want to remind you of your admonition. Please make sure you're not discussing the case with anyone. Uh, make sure that you're uh, not doing any type of independent research or having uh, any type of media exposure to the case. Uh, leave your notebooks where they are. They'll be collected and held by the court attendant uh, over our lunch recess. And at this time, you may exit the courtroom. And Mr. Behima, you may step down. <laughs>